Hello. Um, so I'm Ben Chris. I'm CTO Box, and I'm going to talk today about our journey of uh, through AI, and in particular, our AI agentic journey. Um, and uh, if you don't know much about Box, uh, a little bit of background. Um, so at Box, we are um, an unstructured content platform. Uh, we've been around for a while, uh, more than 15 years. And um, our, we very much concentrate on large enterprises. So uh, we've got uh, over 115,000 enterprise customers. We've got uh, two thirds of the Fortune 500. And um, our job really is to bring everything you'd want to do with your content to these customers and to provide them all the capabilities they might want. In many cases, uh, for AI, many of these customers, their first AI deployment was actually with Box because, um, of course, many enterprises uh, worry a lot about data concerning security concerns and worry about data leakage with AI, make sure to do safe and secure AI. And this is one thing that we uh, have specialized in over time. Um, but the way that we think about um, AI is at a platform level. So um, we have sort of the historic version of Box, which um, has the idea of the global infrastructure, sort of everything you need to manage and maintain content at scale. We've got over an exabyte of data. We have an awful lot of, of uh, uh, hundreds of billions of, of files that our customers have trusted us with. Um, and we have the natural way to protect them, in addition to the type of services that you provide when you're an unstructured data platform. But then for the last few years, um, one of the key things we've been investing in has been in AI on top of the platform. And I'm here to tell you a bit about our journey here. So um, we started our journey in 2023, uh, shortly after uh, AI became sort of production ready from a generative AI sense. And everything I'm talking about here today will be generative AI, of course. So um, we ended up with a set of features, things like QA across documents, things like being able to extract data, things like being able to do AI power workflows. Happy to talk about these in general. But um, today, I'm going to focus on one aspect of uh, the features that we built, which is the idea of data extraction. This is the idea of taking structured data from your unstructured data and, and using that in an enterprise setting. Um, and partly, I'm going to uh, focus on this one because this is interestingly like maybe the least agentic sort of um, thing that you might think of when you're uh, thinking about these other examples about how you interact with AI. This is much less like a standard chatbot style integration. But uh, what we learned and what I'll tell you about is how you, the concepts of agentic uh, uh, capabilities applies well beyond just sort of end user interactions. So um, we'll be talking about data extraction for a moment, just a quick background. When we talk about metadata or data, we talk about the things in unstructured data, be it documents, be it contracts, be it project proposals, anything that then turns into structured data. Uh, this is a very common challenge in, in enterprises is that they have like 90% of their data is unstructured, 10% of their data is in databases, structured data. Um, and, uh, and historically, there has been this, this challenge that like, it was kind of hard to, to utilize this. So many, many, inter many customers have, for a very long time, wished they had better ways to automate their unstructured data. And there's a lot of it, and it's really critical. In some cases, it's the most critical thing in an enterprise. So um, uh, the things you do with it would be to like, uh, uh, query your data, being able to kick off workflows, being able to do um, just the, a better search and filtering across all of your data. And so, so this, like uh, the prototypical example, this is something like a contract where you have an authoritative unstructured piece of data, but then also uh, the, the key fields in there are, are very important. So um, this is not a new thing. For many, many years, uh, the world, uh, for Box included, has been interested in pulling out unstructured, uh, structured data from unstructured data. And um, there were a lot of techniques to do this. And there, there's a whole industry. If you ever heard of IDP, this is like a, a multi-billion dollar industry whose job in life was to do this kind of, of, of uh, extraction. But it, it was really hard. You had to build these specialized AI models. Uh, you had to like focus on specific types of content. You had to have this huge corpus of training data. Oftentimes, you need to build, get custom vendors or custom uh, 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 ML models that you make. And it was quite brittle. And then to the point, not a lot of companies ever thought about automating most of their, most, uh, their, their critical unstructured data. So this was sort of the state of the industry for a very long time. Like, uh, just um, don't bother trying too hard with unstructured data. Do everything you can to get it in, in some sort of structured format, but don't try to, too, too hard to deal with unstructured data. Until generative AI came along. And so this is where our, our journey uh, sort of begins with AI uh, is for a long time, we've been using ML models of different, uh, in different ways. And we, we, it, in, in the first thing that we tried um, when confronted with uh, sort of a GPT-2, GPT-3 style of, 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 uh, of AI models is 
that you just say, uh, I have a question for you, AI model. We, can you extract this kind of data? And in the same, and, and as we mostly all know, is 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 uh, AI is not only great at um, generating uh, uh, content; it's also great at understanding the nuances of content. So, this uh, so what we did: we we first started out with a um, some some uh, a pre-processing, you know, doing sort of um, OCR steps, classic ways to do this, um, and then being able to then say, I want to extract these fields. Standard AI calls single shot or with some some declaration of the on the prompts, um, and this worked great. This was amazing. This was something where suddenly a standard, generic, off-the-shelf AI model from multiple vendors could outperform even the best sort of models that you had seen in the past. Uh, and uh, we supported multiple models just in case, and then it got better and better. This was wonderful. So this was flexible. You could do it across any kind of data. You could it performed well. Um, it was uh, 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 yes, you had to do OCR and pre-process it, but that was straightforward. And so we were just thrilled. This was like uh, for us. It was like this is this is this is a new generation of of, of AI, and, um, and interestingly, we would go to our customers and say we can do this across any data, and then they would give us some, and it would work. And then we'd be like, great, AI models are awesome. Until they said, oh, now, uh, now that you do that well, and I, I get it. Now, what about this one? What about this 300-page lease document with 300 fields? What about this really complex uh, set of digital assets? You want to get these really complex questions associated with it. What about, I want to do not just extract data, I want to do risk assessments and things that are these like more complex fields. You start to realize, huh, like this, as a human, when I, if you ask me that question, I'm struggling to answer it. Um, and then in the same way, the AI started to struggle to, to answer it. So um, suddenly, uh, we ended up uh, with um, more complex documents. Um, also, OCR is just a hard problem. Uh, like, like there's no, seemingly like no end of, of uh, heuristics and tricks that you do in, on OCR to get it right. So I've got a scan document. Somebody writes stuff in it. Somebody crosses stuff out. It's just hard. Um, and then, and then um, for people who have dealt with like things like different file formats, PDFs, like um, it, it, it's a challenge. So whenever the OCR broke, it would just naturally give bad info to the AI. And then um, languages were a big pain. Um, and, and so we started to get more and more challenges as we have an international set of customers across different use cases. Um, also, there was a clear limit to the AI in terms of how much it could handle the uh, attention to so many different fields. So if you say, here's 10 fields, here's a 10-page document, figure it out, they're great. They're, most of them are great. If you say, Here's a 100-page document, and here's 100 fields that are each of them complex with separate instructions. Then they, it loses track, and and I have sympathy because people would lose track too. And so um, this became very problematic because if you want high accuracy in an enterprise setting, like you, this just starts to not work. Um, and then also it's just like, well, what is accuracy? What does it mean? In the old ML world, they give you Kafka scores. Uh, 0.865 is this one. Universe. And then of course, large language models don't really know their own accuracy. So we would implement things like LM as a judge. And we'd come back and tell you, like, here's your extraction. Also, we're not quite sure this is right. And then our enterprise customers would kind of be like, well, that's helpful to know, but like, I want it to work right, not just you tell me it doesn't work right. And so this became this kind of set of challenges that, that, that um, we, we, we focused on. And so customers were looking for speed. They were looking for affordability. They are making this work. They are saying, if AI is this future awesome thing, then like, you know, show it to me. And so we're in all these more complex documents. So at this point, we kind of hit our, our despair moment. Um, our, we thought LLMs were the solution to everything. We thought that like, we could have these AI models that worked. But, um, and we actually struggled. Like, what do you do now? How do you fix this? And I know, let's just wait until uh, the next uh, Gemini model or uh, you know, OpenAI seems to be on top of this. So like, wait till the next one, which is part of it, right? The models do get better. But um, the fragility of the architecture was one that was, uh, we weren't really going to be able to solve on our own. So, um, naturally, uh, one of the answers uh, that we were, came up with was um, bringing agentic approaches to everything that we do. And this is really the, the, one of the key things that um, I want to sort of bring out in this session is that um, it certainly was not obvious that the way to fix all these problems in something like data extraction was to do agentic style of interactions. And when I say agentic, I mean an AI agent that does something like this. Uh, AI model instructions, objectives uh, uh, with the model background, uh, tools, we make have secure access. Of course, it has memory from the purposes of, of advancing and being able to look up information in, inside of, of, of the system. But also with a uh, full uh, directed graph. 
So the ability to orchestrate it to be able to do things like where you say, do this, then this, then this. Either it comes up with its own plan or we actually can orchestrate it ourselves because we have knowledge of what we want it to do. And this was for us, um, it was controversial. Like it was like our engineers were like, what are you talking about? Like, uh, let's just make the OCR better. Like, uh, like let's just add another step somewhere. Like, let's just add a post-processing uh, regular, regular expression check. So, and, then, and then of course, everybody always like, I have a way to do this um, based on the old way of doing this. Why don't we make train an ML model? Like, why don't we fine tune? And then, and, 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 and so suddenly all of the genericness of it would be get lost in this process. So, um, we came up with a mechanism, which was a, uh, so this is, uh, I think, like kind of land graph style of agentic uh, capabilities. And um, so we still, we went, uh, we still had the same inputs and outputs. In document with fields, out answers. However, the approach was an agentic approach. And so, um, you know, we played with all the models, uh, reflecting uh, back and forth in criticism, uh, being able to uh, uh, separate it into multiple uh, tasks uh, to be able to have different multi-agent systems work on this. And we ended up with something like this, where you have a step where you prepare the fields, you go through, you group the fields. We learn quickly that like, if, you, if there's like a set of fields that are like customers uh, from a contract and then are like, uh, like parties, and then somewhere else there's like the addresses of the parties, like you need the AI to handle those together. Otherwise it's like, you have three, parties and two sets of addresses which don't match. Uh, match. So, we, we, so we had to break up intelligently the set of fields. We had to go through and we had to um, uh, uh, like, uh, uh, do multiple queries on a document. Then after we got that, we would then use a set of tools to, to check and to double check the results. In some cases, we use OCR. We would then double check it by looking at pictures of the pages um, and, 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 and using multiple models. Sometimes they vote and they're like, wow, like, this is a hard question. Three, three models from different vendors. How, he, Two of them think this is the answer. That was probably a good answer. Um, and then on to the idea of the LM as a judge, not just a judge to tell you that this is, a, um, this is the answer, but a judge to tell you, uh, hey, uh, here's some feedback. Keep trying. Now, of course, this takes a little bit longer, um, but uh, this is something that then leads to the kind of accuracy that you'd want overall. And so for us, this was the, um, the, uh, uh, the architecture that then helped us solve a, a set of problems. And it became um, interesting because every time there was a new set of challenges, the answer was not rethink everything or let's then try like a whole new set of like, oh, we're going to give us six months and, and we'll come up with a new idea. But uh, I wonder if we change that prompt on that one note or I wonder if we add another double check at the end, then we can actually start to solve this problem. So we bring the power of AI intelligence to help us then solve something that we used to think of as a standard function. Um, and then not only that, it, it helped us in other ways. Like, so we, we're naturally, as an un unstructured content store, like one of the first things you always see people, if I can give you a demo right now, it's I have a bunch of, of documents, I have a question. And then we had the same thing, we had a judge. And it'd be like, it would tell us, like, oh, that was a good answer, or that wasn't. And then why not, just if it's not a good answer, we'll take another beat and, and tell the AI, like, uh, try again. Before you tell the user this answer, like, I want you to um, uh, like reflect on it for a second. And this kind of thing just leads to higher accuracy. And then it also leads to much more complexity. So we just announced our deep research capabilities on your content. So in the same way that like OpenAI uh, or Gemini does deep research on the internet, we let you do deep research on your data in Box. We'd look something like this. So this would be like roughly the, the directed graph that you'd have where you'd go through, you know, first we search for the data, kind of do that for a while, figure out what's relevant, double check, then make an outline, kind of prepare a plan, go through, um, uh, make, make a, a process. And this is all agentic thinking. And it, and, and this kind of thing wouldn't really be possible if we hadn't kind of laid the, fr the framework of having an agentic foundation overall. So um, I will leave you with uh, these, uh, a few lessons learned here. Um, so this is based on our time in the last few years. Um, the first is uh, that um, it, it wasn't obvious to us at first, but the agentic uh, abstraction layer from an architecture perspective is actually quite clean. It is, it is very, um, once you start to think this way, it is very natural to think, I'm going to run an intelligent workflow, an intelligent directed graph powered by AI models at every step to be able to accomplish a task. Not everything, but sometimes that's a great, that's a great approach. And this, and this is independent of, some, of a high scale set of, of uh, sort of distributed system design. And, and, and both are important. Like at some point you have to deal with, you know, 100 million documents that day. At the same other point you have to deal with that one. And so being able to separate these two systems into like somebody who thinks about the agentic framework and somebody who thinks about the, the how to scale a generic process is this, is, this is very helpful to keep these distinct. Um, also, it's just easy to evolve. Like uh, in that deep research example, 
one of our biggest, we, we, we did it and then it worked really well except for the output was kind of sloppy. And so we were like, ah, I guess we gotta re redesign the whole thing or add another note at the end to say, summarize this and according to this. And it would just take that in and just redo the output. Took not that long to fix. And this was something that was not obvious to me until later, which is that um, if you're going to be using um, a agentic uh, uh, AI with a team who's been around for a while, like you start to need to get them to think about agentic first kind of thinking, AI first thinking. And one way to do that is to um, let them build something so that they can start to think, oh, like this is not only how we can build more things, but also because we're also a platform for our enterprise customers, they can think about how to make it better, make it better for them. So things like uh, really doubling down on the idea of um, we, we publish MCB servers, what are the tools like for them, what can we do to make it easier, how can we do our agent-to-agent -agent communications, and so on. So um, this is uh, all kind of summed up with is if you're confronted with a challenge, the lesson that we learned is that if it's plausible that an, a set of AI models uh, could help you solve that problem, then you should build this AI agentic architecture early. If I go back in time, I would wish to be done this sooner because then we'd kind of be, uh, have been able to continue to take advantage of that. Um, and so that's my, uh, that's my journey and that's my, my, my lesson through here. Uh, so thank you. Uh, Ankur, are we um, two minutes? Okay, so um, if anybody, what? Uh, two questions, okay. If anybody has any questions, I'm happy to answer. Uh, question being, is this available as API? Yes, um, so we're very API first oriented, so we have an agent API that you can call upon these agents to do things and give them the arguments. So yes, uh, we, we, we provide uh, a, a, a agent, uh, just APIs across everything and tools um, to, to call our, our APIs. Thanks when you start using a, a more manual approach as well. Um, in terms of valuing our agents uh, and how do we do that, um, so we, we not only use uh, LM as a judge, but we also create eval sets. So we have our standard set of eval sets. Um, and then we've learned that um, since AI gets so, so good over time, we created a challenge set of, of eval sets to, so that we can better explore like things that not everybody asks, but if they did, it would be really hard. And then that way you can better decide on whether or not you're not only prepared for now, but as people get more challenging things, we, we know that we can grow across that. So a mixture of eval sets plus LM as a judge plus the idea of just having people give feedback. We, we have limited ability to look as an enterprise company what's happening, but, but the, the idea of them telling us this is still useful in all cases. You can yell if you want, I'll hear you. Uh, uh, so uh, I, I missed the first half of your talk, so apologies if I yeah. asked a bunch of the story. You were going to talk about that stuff. It seems like you're mostly building agents, but things good to get out of the box in the center side tuning for any of those folks. Uh, so the question being, why bother with agents if you can fine tune a model? Um, no, no, I'm saying, have you tried, have you tried fine tuning yeah, we're, uh, agents? We're, um, we're pretty anti fine tuning at this moment because um, of the challenges of once you fine tune something, you have to then fine tune all of the evolutions of them going forward. We support multi, multiple models, Gemini, Llama, uh, OpenAI, Anthropic, and it's just hard to consistently fine tune across the board in ways that like not only, and usually just the next version of the model gets better. So we've, we've gotten to the point where we use, use prompts or cache prompts or agenticness as opposed to fine tuning. That's the approach for our particular use cases that works quite well. Okay, thank you everyone.